Redrafting the 1987 NBA Draft. Number one, David Robinson. Imagine Robinson started his career at 20, 21, or 22. He started it at 24 due to playing four years at the Navy and then serving two years in the military. There is a good chance he's even higher all time as he was immediately an all-NBA and all-defensive level player as a rookie. Robinson was a top five defender in the league while also being an elite scorer with one of the best, if not the best, face-up game in the league. By all accounts, Robinson is one of the nicest human beings in NBA history, and there's a case that Robinson was almost too good of a person. That might sound weird, but no one ever got the sense that he was a psycho competitor, and it would show in the playoffs as he underperformed multiple times, including only averaging 20 against the Jazz in round one of the 94 playoffs after averaging 30 in the regular season and getting his butt kicked by Hakeem in 1995. But as an individual, I really don't think there's a better player in this draft. Number two, Scotty Pippen. For my money, Pippen Pippen is the best non-big man defender of all time. You could argue Kawhi for a defensive peak, which I might even tend to agree with, but Pippen had a substantially longer peak as an incredible defender. If he was just that, he would already be super high up in this draft, but Pippen was also a solid scorer and very good passer, and just the perfect and greatest second option in NBA history. And I do think it's really close between Scotty and David Robinson for who's the better player in this draft, but Robinson proved year in and year out that he could be an elite number one option on really good basketball teams. Number three, Reggie Miller. Like Steph Curry, the value of Reggie Miller shooting a shot that is nearly the same value as a layup from 25 feet out can't be understated. It stretches and changes the proportions of a basketball court for the defense to deal with a guy that not only has the shooting ability, but is willing to not be ball dominant and to instead run around a million screens to get his shot off. Miller was routinely on elite offenses, and the best part about him is he might be one of, if not the greatest playoff riser compared to his regular season play, including insane clutch shots and multiple 30 points per game runs compared to his highest regular season points per game of 24.6. From 1989 to 2001, Miller is 23-3 and on 62% true shooting, which is an absurd plus 9% relative true shooting. Number four, Kevin Johnson. Johnson remains one of the more underrated guards in league history as a talent out of the model of Russell Westbrook and Derrick Rose, but his off-the-court issues make me not really want to speak highly of him, so we will move on. Number five, Horace Grant. I think Rodman was and is a better basketball player, but it is really interesting that he gets mentioned in the big three with Pippen and Jordan, but Grant, who was far more impactful over his three-year run than Rodman, who really tapered off in 97 and 98, doesn't really get talked about as much. And Grant also went on to be a key piece of the 95 Magic, who made the finals and beat his former team. Grant, like Rodman, could play both up and down, as well as having the offense that Rodman didn't, being a very efficient scorer who could play in the post and hit a jumper. And from 1989 to 1998, Grant was 13-9 and on 56% true shooting, which is around plus 2-3% relative true shooting, along with making four all defensive teams. Number six, Reggie Lewis. What could have been? Reggie was supposed to be the one to take the torch from Larry to be the next Celtic great. Now, I'm not going to lie and say he was some perfect player who could have won multiple championships as a number one guy, but he died at 27, which is around when players enter their peak, and before that, he was 19-5-3 with one and a half steals a game and a block a game from 1989 to 1993. And a big reason why his numbers aren't eye-popping is because he played behind Bird and McHale during that stretch and was just given the keys to the team. Number seven, Mark Jackson. Jackson was one of the best examples of a pure pass-first point guard of old. He was just a very high-level floor general with a weird little man post-up game. He's sixth all-time in assists and was just a consistent, constant player on all the teams he played for, including the early 90s Knicks and Reggie Miller Pacers, where for 14 straight years he was 10-4-9 with a steal a game on a round league average 53% true shooting. Number 8. Kenny Smith Smith started his career as a more traditional point guard, then slowly but surely became a lethal off-ball threat, including being a key piece on the two 90s Rockets championship squads. And from 1988 to 1994, Kenny was 14-6-2 with a steal a game on 49-40-82 shooting splits, or an excellent 57% true shooting. Number 9. Armand Gillian. Gillian was one of the better scoring fours of the 90s, and one of his nicknames on Basketball Reference was literally the Black Hole, which is apt seeing as his career high in assists was 1.8. Gillian wasn't much of a defender, but again, he was a solid scoring big who was a decent bet for a double-double, and from 1988 to 1996, he was 16-8 and eight on plus 2%, 55% true shooting. Number 10, Muggsy Bogues. I don't know how he did it. I don't think I'll ever understand how he did it. 
Not only was Bogues 5'3", he wasn't like a freak athlete for his height like Spud Webb or really a great three-point shooter. He was just a solid floor general year after year and somehow wasn't a total disaster on the defensive side, playing solid, smart defense, even averaging over two steals a game three times in his career. And from 1988 to 1997, Bogues was 8-8 eight eight on just under a steal a game. 